The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. We, the community board, get to hear from you, the community, as far as whatever issues that concern you, um, whatever announcements that you want to make uh, to us. Um, you know, this is our time to hear you. So what I'm going to ask you to do is the following. Um, so if you go to the participants section, is so if you go and click on participants, and what you'll notice is that if you somewhat scroll your um, mouse over to the right-hand side of the screen, you will see where your hand can be raised. So again, if you are on your computer, computer, if you take your mouse and you highlight your name and you scroll over to near the right side of the screen, you can see your hand being raised right before the mic and right before the camera. So if you would do that, and that way I could acknowledge your hand, and of course, then I could recognize you. So if you were in the community, not board members, but if you were in the community and you could do that, then I will recognize you in Community Speaks. Once you raise your hand and once you are recognized, then of course you will have three minutes to address the board with any uh, concern that you may have, any announcement that you may have, or anything that you would like to tell us or would like to tell the community at large. So again, um, you, you have three minutes total. And again, this is any topic that you would like to speak uh, to us about. Now, the one thing that I would also like to say is that um additionally this is not for elected officials because obviously there is a section for elected officials um as well so when you come on elected there is a section for you as well so what i'm going to do is i am going to um mute everyone because again some people are still getting through now if you're on the phone and you would like to raise your hand then you click star nine, okay? If you're on the phone and you would like to raise your hand to be recognized, you click star nine if you're on the phone, okay? If you would like to speak, once of course you are unmuted, then that is star six if you're on the phone, okay? So if you're on the phone and once you're unmuted, then of course you get star six. So for those individuals, and I see right now, I see four individuals, that are on the phone, if you are a community member and you would like to speak in Community Speaks, just hit star nine so that you could be recognized, okay? So with that being said, without further ado, I also need to let everybody know that if you are on, I'm looking to see if we're on channel 67, so I do not know whether we're on channel 67 or 69 just yet. I think uh, our district manager says that we're on channel 69, but if not, you could always scroll back to channel 67, okay? And if we're on Fios, again, I do not remember the channels that were announced, but again, I'm sure that if you know, please, um, you know, put it in the chat and uh, we can move forward, okay? So first up, I see uh, Mary O'Chaughnessy. So Ms. O'Chaughnessy, uh, I'm hopeful I'm not butchering your name. If I am, please forgive me. Uh, please unmute yourself and you can begin Community Speaks and good evening to you. Good evening, thank you for uh, calling on me. My name is Mary O'Shaughnessy and I am a homeowner of uh, 2019 Vintage on Bruner Avenue uh, between Barnes and New Reed. I noticed a couple of weeks ago that DOT is, was doing survey work to put uh, curb cuts into the corner of Barnes and Bruner, which is lovely. Um, I was wondering if you had any information on a time frame for that because people do park and I have neighbors that might like to know when they may need to move their cars. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Shaughnessy. So to answer your question, um, I do not know. Um, I do know that the Department of Transportation uh, does put out a list of projects that they have going on in the Bronx. I do not have that information in front of me, what I can ask you to do is I can ask you to contact our office and either contact our district manager, Mr. George Torres, or our community associate, Ms. Ursula Green, and they can get you that list of all the projects that are ongoing in the Bronx. 
and, and your area may or may not be covered. But I, I right now I cannot sit here and tell you that I know specifically what's going on with that project because I don't. OK, so thank you so, so much. Um, next, I see uh, Miss Cheryl. If I'm not saying that it's is. Oh, and I don't not want to uh, say your name incorrectly. I want to say is Krushi Shank. And again, please forgive me if I um, if I uh, butchered your name. Mm -hmm. And again, please, uh, as I said, please forgive me. So um, I think that I am requesting that you unmute yourself. There you go. So now I can hear you. So you welcome, me? and please forgive me for uh, your name, but um, again, I'm, I'm only human, so welcome. It's okay, thank you. My name is Sherelle Cruikshank, and I am the CEO at Human First, and we are a nonprofit organization that provides supports and services for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And our organization has um, submitted notification to the community board in regards to um, a possible apartment that we are focused on renting at this point. Uh, it's located at 814 Chestnut Street, uh, apartment two. And um, there will be four individuals that will be living in that apartment and there will be uh, 24 hour staffing. So there'll be a staff as long as they are in the house, um, there will be a staff with them and to help them and support them through whatever they may need as um, they live together um, in that apartment. Um, the organization is under the auspice of um, OPWDD, the Office for People with Developmental Disabilities. That's our funder. Uh, we will we provide them, the individuals, with support so that they can live as independently as possible. Um, and we had the privilege of meeting with the health committee um, in February and presented this information at that time and met with them. And um, in speaking with Carl um, today, he afforded the opportunity for us to come and say a few words to the community board and answer possibly any questions that you may have. Okay, so can you please say your last name again? Uh, Krushank. okay, so Ms. Krushank, what, 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 so I spoke with the um, chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, Mr. Lanzano, and so what we wanna do is, um, because we need to take a vote on, um, on your proposal tonight, and so what I actually want to do is open it up to questions at that time. So um, and he's going to give his um, his recommendation to the board. And then I think that's when we'll open it up for questions and answers. OK. So do you need me to stay on to be able to answer yes. questions at that time? Yes. yes, I would need you to stay on. Yes. OK. OK. okay. All right, so thank you uh, very, very much. And I guess if you can mute yourself uh, until then, as I said, we will, um, you know, we will definitely um, take this up. Okay, so thank you. So next uh, up in Community Speaks is I've just sent a request to our own president of the 47th Precinct Community Council, Mrs. Pamela Hamilton Johnson. So hopefully, Pam, let me know if you got the link. Yep, you did. Okay to unmute yourself and welcome as always to your community board, to community board 12. Thank you so much, can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Pamela uh, Hamilton Johnson. I'm the president of the 47 Precinct. And I just wanted to announce that they are opening up the elections for the executive board. Um, we already did our meeting in the month of March, so we have to have an ex uh, expedited meeting to get the nomination committee. And the nomination committee is to go through the past meetings to see who um, had attended four meetings. So they are using our virtual um, attendance and they are going back to the book. Um, so it was uh, 2020 and 2019, you just have to have four uh, attendances at any of the meetings between that time, you would be eligible to be on the nominating committee. We sent out, uh, we 
sent, we're sending out flyers because we just got the information. Um, the flyers should be out soon. Um, if you are linked to us via uh, your email, you'll get it sooner than that. Um, so this is not the election just yet. This is for the nominating committee. We're looking for three people to be on the nominating committee. If you will come to the meeting on March 31st, I will put the information in the chat. And if you're interested in being, on, now remember, if you're on the nominating committee, you cannot run for an office. So let me just state that clearly. Um, but if you are interested in running for the board, you can. Every year, all the seats are open um, and anyone can run and you can even nominate yourself from the floor. So I just wanted to let everyone know uh, they were going to actually extend it a whole year. Um, they are not, and we are going to have elections this year. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, uh, Mrs. Johnson. So if anyone here wants to run for the executive board of the precinct uh, council here, the 47th precinct council, um, obviously, you know, see Mrs. Johnson and, you know, she will help you do that. So again, thank you for the work that, you know, you do, uh, Mrs. Johnson, and on behalf of us, and like I said, um, and again, we look forward to supporting whether it be you or anybody else uh, running for the executive board. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you. So next we have Miss Winnie, I think that's Fair as F A R Winnie Farr. So, Ms. Farr, you please unmute yourself and welcome to the community board 12. Good evening. My name is Winifred Parkinson. Yes. And we live at 1267 East 22nd Street. We have a big problem. There is a house behind us that have a lot of bushes. So now what we are having are rats coming from over the uh, property next behind us. We have reported it to tree level, nothing happened. This has been going on for a year. Not only that, we have some, I don't know if they are hedgehogs or some huge monsters. I don't know what they are, they burrows into the ground. And uh, we plant flowers and vegetables behind there and they just burrow and eat out all the yeah, the, the crop. So we are. I'm not sure who to report this. I've been trying to call 311, but haven't been getting through. So I said, let me bring it up this evening regarding those rodents. They're really huge. Okay. So um, thank you for you know bringing that to our attention. I'm going to ask our district manager to chime in on that because it sounds like. Um, that's a, a Department of Health issue. What I, did you know, can you tell me whether or not their property is um, abandoned or not? And you, again, you muted yourself again, Ms. Farr, so please, um, I, I just sent a note for you to unmute yourself. So um, you muted okay. yourself, so can you, can you no, tell me whether or not the property is abandoned? No, there are people living in those, in the house behind us. But they don't cut the bushes and this is going on for almost a year and reported it there it looks like a forest behind behind us and um we've been no. complaining and nothing has happened if you want to watch tv if you want to watch it okay um george if you would tackle that because i think what, what i'm yeah. based on my knowledge here's what i can probably tell you um the department of Health may very well say, well, it's a private matter. There is nothing that we can do. Uh, I, I mean, because I had that, you know, um, with one of my neighbors, which in fact, um, there was the entire Sherwood Forest was growing back there. And quite frankly, um, what wound up happening was we had to wind up forcing the neighbor to clean up back there because, of course, the city would say that there was nothing that they could do. So that's from my personal experience. But I'm going to have our district manager chime in because you know he may know something that I don't and um you know we can go from there so George if you would um address this um constituent of ours and make certain that I'm giving her the proper information no I, I think it's um fairly it's 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 right on um the only thing that I would say is you mentioned that there were rats um yes. if there are rats um three it, you can make a rat citing complaint um doh will go out 
Um, if they can verify that there have been rat sightings, um, they will issue a summons to the homes. Now, that may very well be your home as well. Um, so, you know, you have to be very careful because what they'll, they'll do an inspection. And uh, you said, for example, if I heard you properly, um, you have a garden. So that may be attracting so what, the rodents. No, what is now win is now winter. And there's well, nothing look, behind there. I don't have a garden. Understood. A garden. Yeah. Oh, okay. That okay. But there's not um, there's nothing behind there now because remember it's winter time and the flowers yeah. there are now dead. They just start to come up. It's springtime. I don't okay. have a, a garden. My next door neighbor has the garden that plants. Oh, okay. Vegetables. And right. um you, they can come anytime and you can see where the borrowing and the rest they're coming from yeah. behind there. Um, do, is, do you live in a semi-attached or are those uh, row houses are all attached? The row, row houses, they are attached. All right, so it's six, tw one, two, three, six, six, of, six of us are row of houses. So Phil the boss behind us, the boss behind is a single house by itself. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if you want, I'd be more than happy to call, to make the complaint to the Department of Health. I can send an email to them. Uh, it's 1267 East 222nd Street. Correct. That's the house that has the problem, or is that your, like, I don't, you don't have to give me your address. I can give you my phone number. No. We can speak offline. No, that's not the house. The house is behind us at 12, that would, 1260 East 223rd Street. Okay. 223. All right. So I will make a complaint. Um, and like I said, we can follow up. I will put my email and phone number in the chat, and then you just write it down. You can call me tomorrow, um, but I'll make the complaint right after. I'll probably make the complaint while we're, you know, while you guys are all talking. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you, George, and thank you, uh, Ms. Fall. We really, really appreciate you bringing that to you know, our attention. So. Before I close community speaks, I'm looking and I don't see anyone else's hands raised. So again, if you're on the phone, it's star nine if you want to uh, raise your hand. If you're on a computer, as I stated before, you highlight your name in the participant section and you go over to where your hand is shaded. So before we close out community speaks, is there anybody else that needs to speak from the public going once? Is there anybody else that needs to speak from the public going twice? Okay, with that, Community Speaks is now closed. So again, thank you very, very much community for bringing your issues and your concerns to us. We really and truly appreciate it. I forgot to mention that if you also are having any issues and you did not come in and uh, speak to us on Community Speaks, we do have a Facebook page, and so that is CB12 The Bronx. So if you go to CB12 The Bronx, and of course, if you, in fact, we're Facebooking, uh, excuse me, Facebooking, that's incorrect. We're on Facebook Live right now. So if you go there, in fact, you can actually put in some of your uh, questions and concerns in there as well, and we will answer you in real time. So again, thank you, community, for uh, bringing this to our attention. And so now we're at the point in the agenda, which of course, and I forgot to share the agenda. It seems like I forget to do something every single uh, meeting, but that is okay because I'm human. And so we make mistakes. So here is the agenda for uh, the meeting. And so we've just finished the public gallery session. And so next we're going to go into um, the elected. We're gonna hear from our elected officials. And of course, then uh, hopefully uh, Ms. Uh, Ruiz is here, Ms. Alexa Ruiz is here. And then um, she will give a report from the Borough President's Office. Then of course, I will give my report. And then of course, the district manager will give his report. And we will go on to uh, minutes of the board as well as the finance report. We will circle back to um, the, the committee recommendations, which of course there is one that is pressing that needs to be voted on that is not uh, written down here. Then of course, we will hopefully get through uh, the old business relatively quickly. I have some notes here as well as a new business. And of course we will end with, uh, you know, good and welfare. Okay, so hopefully we will be done. Ms. my goal will be done 
by nine o'clock this evening. So that is the goal. So let's try and make sure we get that done if we can. So my question is, is there anyone here from uh, Councilman Riley's office? If there's anyone here from Councilman Riley's office, then um, if you could let me know, and um, because I do not see anybody here, oh, I, I can't say um, there's no one here, but I don't recognize any names. Okay, Jermaine. I see it. So, Jermaine, yeah. okay, I see it. So, Mr. Anthony, how are you doing? So, I'm getting ready to unmute you. Um, so, welcome to Community Board 12. Let's see, did I? Yes. So, Mr. Is, is, did I say that, Antonetti? Is that correct? Yes. Okay, great. So, welcome. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I came on a couple of uh, weeks ago. I switched on and off with the deputy chief staff. I did put my um, information in a little bit earlier. I grew up. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in the co-op city community. Um, a board member that you guys have on here has grew has literally raised me since I was a child. That's Missy Jeria. She grew me up at um, Gloria Wise, and she grew me up at my builders program. Um, Ms. Goff, I've worked very, very closely with Ms. Goff a couple of times and things like that. So I'm very active in the community. Tomorrow we have a PPE giveaway. Um, give me one PPE giveaway on the corner of Hammersley Avenue and Gun Hill Road and Gunther Avenue, sorry. Hammersley and Gunther Avenue from two to four. I'm gonna share that in the um in the chat box. But that's the um upcoming events that we have so far. And we have a rank choice rank choice voting event that will be sent to your email so that you guys can email blast it. We'll send an email blast out soon this week for a rank choice voting email. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So please give the councilman um, our best. And um, as I said, I know I owe him a phone call. And so um, you know, please tell him that you know uh, he and I will be in touch probably sometime early next week if you could relay that message to him. Okay. Okay, I would appreciate it. So I know District 11, you know, the nice thing about District 11, of course, is that there was a ranked choice um, voting that took place this past Tuesday. And so right now we're still waiting on the winner of that election for those of us that live in the Wakefield and the Woodlawn sections of Community Board 12. Now, I was looking for Ms. Julia Danielowski because she was still coming in uh, doing uh, constituent services work, but I do not see her um here this evening and so um if someone is here doing that that's great please just put it in the chat so i will know but if not i'm going to move on to um uh mr went who of course is here representing the speaker so um mr went welcome please unmute yourself and uh bring us greetings from speaker hasty's office thank you good evening everyone i hope that you can hear me okay I'm Alex Wentz. I'm the director for Carl Hasty. Um, just to update everyone, I'm sure you've all heard by now that two days ago he was diagnosed with COVID. So he'll be a little indisposed for the time being. Carl Hasty, he's the Speaker of the House and the Senate. Um, this he's month has Hasty. been. Okay, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Okay. We've okay. had an event, including a partnership with the Red Cross online, as well as a informational session with SUNY EOC to go over different educational opportunities that were available to members of the Bronx. In addition to that, our clothing drive, which we are working with the Salvation Army, we're still collecting new and lightly used items. Um, and that's to fund different programs with the Salvation Army. But overall, I would say that this past month has been pretty busy and pretty productive. Um, next month, we're looking to do a little bit more events in the actual community will be um, at various different sites, but again, we all have to wait and see what happens, especially being that we're still in this pandemic. I want to thank you all for your support um, over the last few weeks, as well as working with me as the new community relations director. It, it's been challenging, but rewarding. So thank you all very much for your support. Well, Mr. Wynn, again, thank you for the work that you do uh, on behalf of the speaker, as well as for the community. I think that our goals are aligned and you know we look forward to doing anything that we can to you know assist you in making your transition into your role uh easier so again uh thank you and i see you putting your information in the chat so as i said anything that we can do just uh please let us know so next i see assemblyman dinowitz is 
on. I just saw him click on. So Assembly Medinowitz, uh, please unmute yourself. You have um, the floor um, if you can get on, Mr. Assemblyman. So um, let me know. Um, seems like I'm having difficulty right now unmuting you. So I know Mr. Ivan Neds is here as well. So um, let me try working with Mr. Neds. And I, even though I know you're here, Assembly Medinowitz, and I, I did not know what's happening. So um, Mr. Neds, if you could speak on behalf of the Assemblyman, because as I said, I don't know what's going on with um, with his internet right now. Uh, hi, yes, I'm actually uh, on the phone with him now trying to figure out what's going on with this connection. Uh, for whatever reason, um, you know, every time we uh, do uh, WebEx, there are issues with his uh, computer. Um, but if you can give me one second, I think we can figure this out. Okay. Well, do you want me to, I mean, because there, there are other electeds here, so I mean, I can go to them and come back. Is that okay? Okay. So I think we will do that. So I do see where um, Nancy Gray is here from Senator Bailey's office. So Ms. Gray, uh, please unmute yourself and uh, welcome to Community Board 12. Ms. Gray? Okay, Ms. Gray, you, you are uh, unmuted, so uh, we can't hear you, Ms. Gray. Okay, well, as, as I said, Ms. Gray, you are you are unmuted, but right now we can't hear you, so we'll try to come back to you, and we will see if we can uh, see. Is there anybody here from Senator Biagi's office? I thought I saw uh, Andy Lobb here from Senator Biagi's office. Is there anyone here from Senator Biagi's office? Okay. Oh, I see it. Okay, Angela Conley. Okay, so Ms. Conley, welcome to uh, Community Board 12. Hi there. Uh, Hello, good, how are you doing? Good, how are you, Dr. Burke? Good we to see fantastic. you all. Um, just a few quick announcements. Um, I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone is continuing to stay safe and, and healthy. Um, a few announcements on the legislative front. Um, yesterday, Senator Biagi um, and the Senate passed her bill to fully repeal the blanket immunity that the state granted to healthcare facilities and nursing homes a year ago. Um, which prevented thousands of families who lost loved ones due to COVID from seeking legal recourse um, as a result of those deaths. Um, so the Senator introduced that bill because she believes it's the duty of the government to protect the most vulnerable among us and not to protect corporate shareholders. Um, so yesterday was, was a really big day and a big step for those who unfortunately lost loved ones um, over the last year who were in um, nursing homes and healthcare facilities. And Senator Biagi wanted me to mention that she um, introduced the bill and voted to fully repeal those immunities to honor the thousands of New Yorkers who we lost in nursing homes and to honor their grieving families who are looking for justice. Um, so that was a big, um, big news yesterday that we were very happy about. Um, and Senator Biagi also recently introduced um, a Senate bill which establishes the Marshall Plan for Moms Task Force, which examines um, issues related to the COVID pandemic um, and the addresses the disproportionate burden that mothers have faced from the economic fallout due to COVID-19 uh, and the pandemic. So there's lots happening in Albany um, on those two fronts with those two bills and um, all things considered, the hope is that um, I know there's there's a lot going on, but the hope is that um, budget talks will will continue and will hopefully be be done on time. There's a March 31st deadline, um, but the senators is working hard to make sure you're all represented in Albany. Um, on um, in terms of constituent services, I'm actually a member of Senator Biagi's consist constituent services team. So just wanted to uh, to let everyone know that we're sort of doing a hybrid. Um, schedule in terms of working remotely and working in the office a few days a week um, just to, to keep everyone safe um, because COVID is still um, a problem and not everyone is yet vaccinated, but we are taking constituent calls, cases. Um, if anyone is in need of any help, um, please feel free to reach out. 
Um, you can call us at 718-822-2049 um, or constituent services at senatorbiagi.com. And um, we've been putting a lot of emphasis on, on helping people sign up to get vaccinated. And we created a vaccine appointment request form, um, which people can fill out and submit to our office. And then we will help them um, secure those appointments for the vaccines. So I will leave uh, my email, my contact information, and that uh, link to that form in the chat. So if anyone is interested in filling that out, please do. And again, if there are any other issues, um, that arise that anyone has, please feel free to reach out to me. I will leave my uh, personal number and my um, personal email in the chat. Thank you so much. Have a good night. No, no problem. Thank you, Ms. Conley. Please give uh, the Senator our best. So I see um, Mr. Rodriguez from Council District 11, but I want um, Assemblyman Medinowitz to speak. So I think we're going to work through um, Ivan Ned's, his um, Representative, so Mr. Nez is now uh, have the Senate, I'm excuse me, the Assemblyman available. So welcome to you, Assemblyman Denowitz. How are you doing this month? I'm well, Dr. Burke. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for asking. Okay, I'm sorry we have to speak this indirect way. This isn't the first time. I'm not sure what the problem is, but whatever, as long as we can communicate. Um, yes, so sir. I will be especially brief because um, given given the whole computer thing here. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that the state budget is going to be passed, we think, uh, sometime next week. And given the circumstances that our state has been in for the past year, uh, I think we are about to really come through big time for the people of the state of New York. Uh, I think, as you know, the bottom fell through in the state economy. We lost a huge amount of our revenue because tourism, Wall Street, real estate, among others, provide an enormous amount of revenue. That's how we pay for our schools. That's how we pay for health care and so many other things. And because of, 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 the, of the pandemic, uh, everything changed. But what's happening is we are getting an enormous amount of aid from the federal government. This is part of the rescue uh, package that President Biden just signed that uh, Senator Schumer led the way on uh, in the Senate. And many of you got checks in the mail as a result of uh, you might have gotten $1,400 checks or something approaching that, and that's all part of their rescue plan. But we are getting a huge amount of funding from the federal government, and that's going to help us um, balance our budget and take care of the priorities that we have. And that means restoring cuts to health care, restoring cuts to education. Uh, we're dealing with issues like foreclosure prevention, so many other things. And so it may turn out that this year is not only going to be better than we thought, but it's going to be a lot better than we thought. And uh, I know that the people in Board 12, the people in the Northeast Bronx, have a lot of important priorities. Uh, you know, the legislation that we passed earlier, my legislation, in fact, and I mentioned foreclosure prevention, foreclosure, um, uh, the foreclosure moratorium and the eviction moratorium, that's helped thousands and thousands of people and we're going to keep doing things uh that, that that really address the terrible issues that have been created because of the pandemic uh we're all working to make sure that vaccinations are available to everybody in every corner of the bronx we want to make sure nobody uh gets shortchanged and lots and lots of people in the bronx are getting vaccinated the rates of vaccination are going up and we still have a lot more work to do on that i hope everybody who is eligible, which is most people now. I hope everybody who is eligible to get vaccinated does get vaccinated. Uh, that will save lives, maybe your life, maybe somebody else's life, but it's really, uh, really important. If you have any questions on that issue or any other issue, please contact my district office. My staff has been working twice as hard, three times as hard in the past year, uh, taking care of unemployment issues, and now especially dealing with vaccination issues. Uh, so if, if you need to reach us, the uh, phone number, and I'm sure mostly, most of you have it, is 718-796-5345. And uh, the uh, email is dinowitzj at nyassembly.gov. So we're easily reachable, uh, and, and we're here to help everybody. And again, my district uh, line cuts through the district. Uh, Speaker Hasty has the bulk of Community Board 12, but I have the area west of Barnes Avenue, including the west side of Barnes Avenue. So 
uh, part of Wakefield, all of Woodlawn is in my district, and uh, we uh, we just want to help everybody with every problem that there is, and we have a lot of legislation we're uh, working on besides the budget, but I'll talk about that at another time because I don't want to overstay my welcome. So again, thank you so much, and thank you to all the board members for all the work you do uh, for our community. Well, thank you, Assemblyman Denowitz. Again, we really appreciate you. Um, you know, funny, I was just uh, thinking about you the other day because I wrote about 4747. And, um, you know, I see more benches have been erected um, since um, we last heard from um, the, uh, DHS. So um, I think that, again, we need to follow up because COVID hopefully will be coming to an end soon. Um, I'm hoping within the next so. week by the fall and that we can hold their feet to the fire because this is supposedly a quote unquote temporary situation. And so I think it was somewhat disturbing to see um, more benches being erected. So hopefully, you know, we can get to the bottom of it and figure out what's going on and then hold them accountable. Well, one of you and I and our other electors, we will, we should all talk very, uh, very soon and see where we go next. And you're, and you're right. When somebody says temporary, I always worry. Because temporary could be a long time, and we want to make sure it's uh, that that this comes to a conclusion in an appropriate way that uh, protects the people there, but that protects the neighborhood. Uh, so we we don't want to let this problem drag out any longer than it's already has. Okay. All right. Thank you, Assemblyman Denimus. We appreciate. By the way, we can see you now, so we we appreciate you and uh, all the work that you uh, do for uh, us, you and the speaker as well as Senator Bailey and Senator Biagi. So again, thank you so, so much. We really appreciate you. Okay, great. Have a good evening. Same to you. So next we have Mr. Guillermo Rodriguez, and I also see um, Ms. Uh, Santana from the DA's office, but we're going to uh, speak with uh, Mr. Rodriguez first from uh, Council District 11. So Mr. Rodriguez, welcome to Community Board 12. Hi, uh, good evening. Thank you. So my name is Guillermo Rodriguez. Uh, Julia Dan Danielowski was not able to make it tonight, so I'm here on her behalf. Um, so we just wanted really quickly to let people know that uh, even during this time of transition until all the ballots for Council District 11 are being certified, uh, any constituents that fall within, you know, C uh, Council District 11 can still reach out to our office and they'll still be staff here uh, to help out with anything that they need. I'll put in our our information in the chat, uh, but you know, you can give us a call at 718-549-7300, uh, Monday through Fridays, 9.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Um, and our emails is district11 at console.nyc.gov, but uh, I'll put that information in chat as well. Um, and I think I, do I need some sort of like permission to be able to put in the chat for everyone? Because I don't know. No, you should be able to. I know okay. Mrs. Johnson is having issues as well, and I, I do not know why. Um, okay. you can't. I mean, the chat is open to everybody. So okay. um, I, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but it, hopefully you can. But I, mm -hmm. I know that I've been communicating with Mrs. Johnson because I know she has information that she needs to put in the chat. And so I'm going to ask our, um, you know, our wonderful district manager if he knows what's going on if he can help out with that, but um, you should be able to, because I, I am seeing some communication in the chat. So some people are able to post. And so I'm, I'm hoping that that can be uh, remedied. Okay, yeah, I'm not, I'm not able to, um, so I'll just resend it, I guess, to you. And if you can just paste it in chat, that would be, that would be helpful. Okay, you uh, know what, you can send it to myself. I actually sent it to the district manager or Ms. Ursula Green, either one of them, because I got it right now. Yeah, because um, I'm kind of sort of just watching the entire board. But if you could send it to our district manager and he could post it for you, and then I think that would probably work better. Um, another thing I couldn't suggest is that, I don't know if you may want to log off and log back on and try that. But if you cannot post in the chat, then again, just send everything to either our district manager, Mr. George Torres, or our community associate, uh, Ms. Ursula Green, and they will post it for you, okay? Got it. Thank you so much. Not a problem. You got to Take care of yourself. So I see uh, Miss uh, Santana, uh, actually Miss Tavera. So I'm going to uh, call you up, Mr. Tavera, and so that we can um, unmute you. Right now, I'm having problems, so please just bear with me. Um, again, just bear with me. It's, it's not working properly for whatever reason. So let's try it 
this way. So again, please just bear with me. Okay, so Miss Santana, for whatever reason, I cannot find you um, in the participants list. And I mean, I know that you're here because you posted it in the chat. So I do not know. I'm trying to find you again, see if I can. Um, I'm scanning and I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I see you in the chat, but I do not see you to unmute you so that you can bring us greetings from the district attorney's office. I see Ms. Diaz from the DA's office, so I'm going to click on uh, Ms. Diaz instead, instead, if you don't mind. So, Ms. Erica Diaz, welcome. Good evening, everyone. This is Erica Diaz from the Bronx District Attorney's Office. Unfortunately, Ms. Santana Tavares was having technical difficulties. Um, I was having them as well, like I can't post in the chat, but she provided her contact information. Our office is currently um, working through the process of getting more people working in the office as the city begins to open up um, office buildings again with minimal capacity. Um, also, we're still working on putting together another gun buyback that's looking like a May date. Um, as soon as we have those details, we will definitely share them with the community board as well as with the public at, at large. Um, we're also still promoting our concept program. I know as the school year continues and we're getting into those warmer days, students want to be outside, students want to be hanging out and chatting with their friends online, but sometimes we aren't always aware of what that chatting online, whether it's a computer or video game, what that entails. And one of the workshops that we do give is um, internet safety. That also includes helping parents understand the different methods and platforms that their children are using, whether it's Snapchat, Instagram, even in their own like virtual classrooms. There's times where other people gain access to them. I know there's been times where I've been on some of these meetings on a platform and they actually have other people access them. Um, so if you have any questions or if our office can be of any assistance, please contact Ms. Marilex Santana Tavares or myself. Thank you. Okay, so again, thank you so, so much, um, you know, Ms. Diaz. And again, I, I see where, you know, Ms. Santana has been able to post in a chat and there there is somewhat of a delay because I was finally able to access her. But nonetheless, I think with the both of you being able to address the issues that's coming from the district attorney, um, that is absolutely fantastic. And so um, I guess my question is, I, I see a, a note here, and so I'm going to uh, do this. So I see that um, I see uh, Mr. Dinowitz Jr. is here. So Mr. Eric Dinowitz, and so uh, please unmute yourself and um, address us here at Community Board 12. Thank you. Thanks very much. I just wanted to say a quick hello to everyone. As many of you know, uh, I'm Eric Dinowitz. I'm the Democratic District Leader. Uh, in the Northwest Bronx, and we just, uh, I do a lot of work with elections. Uh, we just had an election on Tuesday. I was actually one of the candidates in the, in the election. I was a candidate for city council. Um, and I want to thank those of you who came out and voted. I want to thank you for voting. Um, I actually came in first place in Woodlawn and Wakefield. Um, so we're still counting. We're still figuring out the results of the election. With ranked choice voting, there's lots of rounds of, of counts and recounts. Um, but but again, I just want to thank everyone who came out and voted. Um, uh, you know, uh, of course, especially for those of you here, be, because because Woodlawn and Wakefield came out so strongly for me. Um, so and I, I deeply appreciate that. Um, things look good. I hope to be serving as your council member in the coming weeks. Um, but regardless, there is an, another election on June twenty second for city council, not to mention mayor and a number of other offices. Um, so again, I wanna, I wanna thank you all. I, I, I look forward to continuing to work with you, continuing to attend meetings and, and being part uh, of the neighborhood regardless of the results of the election. Thank you. All right, well, again, thank you, uh, you know, Mr. Dinowitz for coming in, addressing us here at uh, Community Board 12. And whether it's you or one of your contemporaries, you know, um, we here look forward to working with uh, whoever is victorious from that election. So again, thank you for coming to uh, speak with us. So before closing out, is there any other elected officials? I think I have everybody. Uh, Ms. Gray, I don't know. Again, I'll try you one 
um, last time. I know that there has been some issues going on. So let's try this one more time. So Ms. Gray um, from Senator Bailey's office. So you are unmuted. So can you say something? I don't know, it says you do a testing. I don't know whether it's your mic or not. So, but welcome nonetheless. Okay, so Ms. Gray, we, we we can't hear you. So I, I don't know if you're if you're speaking or not, but yeah, we, we can't hear you. So um nonetheless, we know that you're here from Senator Bailey's office. And so again, uh we thank you so so much for uh coming and we're pretty certain that you're here to bring us greetings from Senator Bailey. What I would ask you to do is the following. If you could put um your information, which you've done in the chat. If there's anything that you would like us to know from the senator, if you could put that um, in the chat as well, we would be indebted to you. So thank you very, very much. All right. So looking, I do not see any more elected officials. So next it is time to hear from the borough president. And of course, that means that it is time for the one and only Ms. Alexis Ruiz from the borough president's office. So welcome, Alexis. How are you doing today? Good evening, Dr. Burke. I uh, hope um, you're doing well. Good evening, everyone. I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here with you all. Uh, I don't have anything new to report. I just want to give the reminder that if you haven't done so already, please, please, please send in the completion certificate that you received after you have completed the sexual harassment training course. Uh, and also, for new members, uh, if you haven't done so already, please notarize the EEO certification form that is attached to the application and then send that in once it's notarized and signed. If you have any questions or any difficulties, please reach out to me via email. I'm gonna enter all of my information in the chat. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. And please uh, give the borough president um, our best. You know, um, we spoke with Madam Deputy early today and of course I'll be reporting out some of that information in a little bit so and actually I'll be reporting it out now because um, we're at the point in the agenda where it is actually uh, my turn so we're actually moving pretty quickly so I'm pretty happy about that so if we um, look at where we're at in the agenda we're already at item four which of course is the community board chairperson's report so to that end um, I'm not going to belabor my report because all of you um, have it. So I'm only going to really point out a couple of things. And so again, for everybody that um, is on the email list of our community associate, Ms. Ursula Green, you already have this. Um, all board members uh, do have this information already. So I'm just going to highlight um, some information and, and it's as follows. So um, the last time we were together, we had three uh, vaccination sites, and those were all um, Walgreens slash Dwayne Reed um, drugstores, which were located on White Plains Road, Baychester Avenue, and Boston Road. So since that time, we have now increased the number of testing sites from three, I want to say, to now it's a total of eight sites. And that includes, of course, the brand new site that we have in the Northeast Bronx uh, and we like to thank our elected officials, uh, Speaker, um, Senator Bailey and Councilman Riley, um, as well as uh, Congressman Bowman, amongst others, for helping to uh, get that together. And again, you can read the details uh, in the report. Um, as you can also look and see, there's also other information as it pertains to where you can access uh, the vaccine. Again, and now just to let everybody know, that the eligibility now is for people that are age 50 and older. So if you're now, and so that um, that changed as of Tuesday. So obviously I submitted my report um, earlier than that. So of course that's why I said 65, but that should read 50 now. So if you're age 50 and older, you're eligible to uh, receive this information. Again, all the websites are listed for those of you that that have this information, you can click on the hyperlink. For those of you that are watching via BronxNet, I'm going to hold it here for a second so that you can hopefully capture uh, the web information where you can find uh, out where you can get the vaccine if it is your turn. Ultimately, you can call this number 800 925 
800-925-4733. Again, that's 800-925-4733. And you can have access to the vaccine. The other, only other thing I want to mention, of course, is that um, you see here where we, we had a meeting this morning with Deputy Borough President um, Ms. Scott McFadden, and I, I sent out a notice to the board as it pertains to an item that we thought that we would be voting on, but in fact, uh, we were not. So as an update as to what's going to happen with that is that we're going to have a discussion from the people who are um, sponsoring and actually wrote the resolution. And before we as a borough service cabinet vote on this, um, the presenters are going to come to each and every community board to solicit support. So prior to this meeting, I had a conversation with our housing committee chair, Mr. Robert Hall, and informed him of what's going to happen. So at some point when either myself or our district manager or our, our community associate, Ursula, gets the notice that they're going to come to speak to the housing committee, then of course we will let Mr. Hall know, and of course Mr. Hall will let all of you know uh, what took place. Or excuse me, that that conversation is taking place so that you can express your concerns uh, to the Mitchell House uh, Mitchell Lama Housing Program. Um, the only other things that came up at the meeting, and again, um, I have the slides, but I hopefully what can happen is either I will get it out to the board. Um, or our district manager would get it out to the board, but we had a presentation from the Parks Department in which um, they're pretty much ramping up their campaign for uh, the summer months. And, you know, obviously some of the things that we talked about was, of course, grilling in the park. And so I found out something that, quite frankly, I didn't know that um, that it is legal to grill in New York City parks. So the only thing that they ask us to do is to clean up after ourselves and um, part of the initiative that they were purporting this morning was, of course, the uh, space for the uh, receptacles. And this campaign is going to be launching soon. And so we ask that you look out for it. The next presenters that we had were from the New York State Workers' Compensation Board. And there was a presentation by the chairperson of that board, Ms. Clarissa Rodriguez, in which um, the board pretty much, the Workers' Comp Board has three um, they have three points of entry in which, of course, they review reports of injuries and payments, excuse me, um, injuries and um, payments, payments that are made uh, by the insurance company. And of course, they're akin to the court system. And so hopefully I won't go into that entire presentation, but what hopefully we will do is get that out to the board and subsequently the community um, as soon as we can. Um, last but not least, of course, there was a presentation that was um, given by the New York City uh, Veterans Affairs, uh, Department of Veterans Services. Mr. Uh, Terry Holliday was a presenter and he gave his phone number for those veterans that are out there. Um, his number is 212-416-5250. Uh, and one of the things that he discussed was, of course, housing support for veterans. So again, um, if you are a veteran and if you are in need of veteran services, then if you would please go to www.nyc.gov uh, forward slash vets, V E T S, then you can access that information. Likewise, if you are in need of workers' compensation, I ask you to go to uh, www.wcb.ny.gov, and likewise, you can get that information as well. So, with that being said, I am uh, done with my report, and so I would like to uh, thank you for your attention, and I would like to turn this over to our district manager, Mr. George Torres. <clears throat> um, I don't have anything to report. Um, I sent, uh, Ursula sent out my report. I, it was two pages long. Um, for the sake of time, I told you all at our last full board meeting that I was not going to be reading my report. Uh, the only thing that I would highlight, I guess, is we've had some very small victories, um, and I think we should all be very proud of that. Uh, Pratt Avenue, with the issue with the retaining wall, with help from board members like John Isaac, um, knocking on doors, literally knocking on homeowners' doors. Um, their DOT is ready to start working on the roadbed next month. Um, uh, they're going to start, uh, well, I shouldn't say they're going to start, DDC, 
is then going to look at replacing the retaining wall. Um, but that's going to be a one or two year project. We don't know just yet. Um, this is one of those projects that during district budget consultations, we can fight for um, or advocate for, I should say. But again, I'm not going to read it. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to call me or shoot me an email. Um, everybody should have the email, uh, should have the report. Um, and if anybody has questions, I'm more than happy to help. But uh, otherwise, have a great evening. Um, I'll see you. Okay, so thank you very, very much, um, you know, George, for your report, and uh, we appreciate this. So the next thing, of course, we're going to uh, discuss is that right now we don't, unfortunately, have the minutes because quite a bit has been going on. And so, um, you know, that's fine. We will, you know, get the minutes to you when um, we get them. So to that end, I'm going to ask our treasurer, Ms. Uh, Tolene Dickerson, and Tolene, I'm trying to find you here, um, if she would please give us a, a brief update as to um, what's going on. So Tolene, the floor is yours. Hi, good evening, family. I'm glad to see everybody's face and that everybody is safe. Uh, report is real easy, real quick. We still have $1,004.56. Um, I have put together a nice little sheet of paper so that everyone can start sending in their money for a sunshine fund. And that would be $20. You can send it in by check or drop it off at the community board office. I will be trying to get a different way or another way that you can send it by Zelle or Cash App or something. Still working on that with the bank. And um, that's it. Glad to see everybody. Not a problem. Not a problem, Ms. Dickinson. I tell you, we're, we're moving right along. So um, thank you so, so much. I think the one thing that I want to mention um, in the financial report, so I think Ms. Dickinson and I, we're, we're working on getting access to our account. And so, um, you know, we're probably going to do that sometime uh, next month. The one thing that I want to plant, um, and, and totally not, I didn't get a chance to call you on this before the meeting, but the one idea that I want to plant in not only your ear, but the rest of the board's ear, is that with the Sunshine Fund, maybe what the, an idea that I had was just thinking about maybe getting a lapel pin for community board members. So for instance, you know how our elected officials yes. have a lapel pin, whether they're city council, whether they're state office holder or even federal office holder. And what I'm thinking is, is that, you know, if we're wearing a blazer or so forth, because eventually our district manager is working on the fact that hopefully, hopefully, prayerfully, we can get back in here before the end of the year um, where we can meet in person, that, you know, that we have a lapel pin that will represent us as members of Community Board 12. Obviously, members in good standing. So I just want that that would have to be purchased and maybe if board members would be willing to do that, then maybe we would look at that as an increase in um, the Sunshine Fund to not only go for bereavement costs, but for the cost of a pen. So I just want to put that idea uh, to you. And again, I apologize for not um, bringing it to you prior to now, but I just, you know, something that came up as we were coming to the meeting today. Okay, thank you. We'll talk about it. Okay, yes, we will. All right, thank you so, so much. So next on the agenda is we want to uh, look at committee recommendations. So we're actually moving right along. And, um, you know, again, I really appreciate that. So on the original agenda, there really wasn't anything to uh, discuss as far as committee recommendations. And of course, um, something um, occurs. And so we're right here at uh, section eight and the agenda before we move into old business. And so I want to circle back to a presentation that we heard in Community Speaks by, I'm just going to say, I think it's Ms. Krushank is if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. So I'm going to unmute uh, her and I'm going to unmute Mr. Lanzano um, because of course he's the chair of the health committee, the health and human services committee. So Ms. Krushank, I'm going to unmute you as well, as well as Ms. Lanzano. I've unmuted Mr. Lanzano, hopefully if he uh, can unmute himself. So Mr. Lanzano, if you can, unmute yourself i'm try this again so that you can um issue your recommendation so miss cruz you are unmuted uh, miss lanzano 
um, we're trying to unmute you. So there should be a button where you can unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. Okay, Ms. Lanzano, we're having issues, and if not, then I can read it for you, Ms. Lanzano, so I can read what you wrote. Is that okay? Okay, so I'm going to read what Ms. Lanzano wrote, and so to make a, a long story short, um, so Ms. Krushank, you gave um, us an idea of what you wanted, so this is the time for board members to ask you questions, because we need to call this to a vote, so here's what uh, Ms. Lanzano said, So, um, and I'm reading a direct quote. With respect to Human First, I was about to give my report and recommendations about 814 Chestnut Street when, okay, so we had problems with uh, WebEx. And so um, he stated the following, I personally visited 814 Chestnut Street, though I didn't go inside. Human First told us that the one apartment on the second floor of the two family residence was over 1200 square feet. It was to accommodate four challenged clients and one full-time staffer. There are four bedrooms and a common area. The size of the residence seems adequate, but as I brought out at the committee meeting, I challenged, excuse me, uh, the committee meeting challenged people would greatly be at risk. And we're talking about challenged people would be the um, people that would be residing, would be greatly at risk in this area behind Evander Childs High School, especially if they were to use a subway stop at White Plains and Gun Hill Road. We were told they would be traveling regularly to Harlem and that would be a train to use. Uh, Mike, that's yours truly, did suggest uh, the alternative Metro North, which would be a much better and safer choice, but a much longer walk unless they were getting transportation from house to train. If it were accessible ride though, they could be taken all the way to Harlem. I spoke with a police officer whose name I neglected to ask for permission to use who said he didn't think it was a great idea for them and wouldn't feel comfortable recommending that they live there. As far as I know, human, excuse me, human First is a fine service provider and these four people need a place to live. They are also very good neighbors and are usually an inspiration to any neighborhood they move into. But that Gun Hill uh, train station worries me. I am in the, and this is again, Mr. Ray Lanzano, I am in the abstain state of mind but perhaps I will be more decisive by the next meeting. I realize there is a 40 day notice provision, but I don't know what or whether at this point there's anything we can do either way, but this is my position for now, respectfully submitted Carl Lanzano. So um, with that being said, so that's where Mr. Lanzano stands. And so Mr. Lanzano has his hand raised. We're gonna try this one more time, Mr. Lanzano, if you can unmute, that'd be great. But if not, you can't, okay. So that that's where that's where uh, Mr. Lanzano is. Now let me just say something before we continue on because I, I have this in my notes here. Um, the one thing that really bothers me, and, and let me let me share some information. So just so you'll know, this is the original letter that was sent uh, to us from Human uh, First, which is the entity that came before for the Health Committee. And so um, I'm, again, we're not going to read this whole thing, but this is the letter that they sent us. So quite frankly, we are, we, we're a little bit late in getting to this issue, but we're gonna vote on it uh, this evening. So this is their letter that was sent to the community board. And as I said, I got a copy as well as, um, you know, Mr. Lanzano and hopefully members of the um, health committee. So let me just make a comment on this. And yes, I know I'm scrolling quickly, but hopefully um, you can speed read, and if not, then just send me a note and I can get this information uh, to you, or um, either Georgia or Ursula can get this to you as well. So with that, I, I need to make a comment before we open this up for questions for Ms. Uh, Krushank. We're gonna be talking about something tonight in which we're gonna be discussing committee, um, people not showing up for committee meetings. And I think what really frustrates the heck out of me and what really made why well, we could not recommend this out of committee was because we have committee. And I, I mean, I know that, um, you know, Ms. Ortiz um, was obviously excused for the reasons that, you know, we won't go into. But I mean, I think everyone knows that, you know, she lost her daughter. And so, you know, clearly Ms. Ortiz was excused. But for everybody else, 
who's on the health committee and, and for people who are asking to be on the health committee and then not showing up is a travesty. So let me go over the rules again, all right, as it pertains to attendance. If you are a board member and if you're not going to be at a board meeting, of course, that is why you call me, the chairman, and let me know that you're going to be excused so that we will not have to deal with the last issue that we have to deal with tonight and the issue that we dealt with last month as it pertains to board members not letting anybody know that they're going to be at a general board meeting. Likewise, for committee chairs, if you are on a committee or asked to be on a committee and then don't show up at a meeting, that is disappointing as well. So at least have the common courtesy to let Ms. Lanzano or any committee chair know that you are not going to be at the meeting. And so we were not able to um, vote this out of committee. And Ms. Krushank is now here asking us for a vote that should have been voted on in committee because, of course, members of the health committee decided not to show up that night. And so, you know, I'm a little bit, so if it sounds like I'm scolding you, the answer is yes, because I'm a little bit upset about that. So please, um, the rules are, quite frankly, in the bylaws, which most have read, but clearly all have not read, all right, but it is clearly in the bylaws as to um, attendance for not only general board meetings, but committee meetings as well. So that's just my, um, that's just my, my input in that because unexcused committee absences can also result in um, removal from the board as well. So not just general board um, uh, meetings, but also absence from committee meetings can result in dismissal as well because everybody is supposed to be on at least a bare minimum of one uh, standing committee. So with that being said, we need to call for a vote. So. Board members. Board Mike, members. excuse me. I, I've gotten my voice now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lanzano. Okay. Can I speak? Yeah, of course you can. Okay. Um, uh, the the issues I had as as Mike laid them out were that the uh, uh, the building, 814 Chestnut Street, is behind Evander Childs. And originally they said that uh, they had to go to work and almost every day down to Harlem, <clears throat> which meant they were going to use the Gun Hill Road, White Plains, uh, uh, White Plains Station, the IRT. And my understanding is it's very dangerous. Uh, there's a lot of trouble there, not so much danger, the killing and everything, but the kids really make a riot over there. And the question uh, was whether or not it's appropriate for them to be there. Uh, Dr. Burke suggested that they go to the um, Williams Bridge uh, Metro North station, which uh, uh, Ms. Crookshank uh, said they would do. So uh, that's a very good plus. Uh, I would also, I would like Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Hall, who, who was uh, chairman of around there of the projects in uh, Gun Hill, also to speak to the neighborhood, if he may, uh, if he might. Uh, uh, Bob, are you there? Robert Hall? I guess not. Okay. Um, uh, Cheryl gave her speech, or uh, her talk about it. Uh, it's a very good, uh, service they give. Uh, the people are coming from Brooklyn uh, to live in, in the, on the second floor of a, a two-story building. I was there. It is a, uh, uh, an upgraded two-family brick house. Uh, the issue there might be the steps because they have to go to the top floor. Uh, if, if you have any questions for Cheryl, please ask her now because she's here to answer them. And they've been waiting since uh, November uh, to occupy the building. We couldn't make a recommendation because we didn't have a, uh, uh, a quorum that day. That's why we, we, we're coming directly to uh, the board because it does have to have a, a, um, a vote. Cheryl, please. Hi. Uh Good evening again. Um, I just wanted to add some additional comments. Um, 
based on the conversation. Can I, can I, can I ask you to hold on? Because we actually had Mr. Hall who successfully oh, unmuted himself and now he's muted again. So, Mr. Hall, we're going to try this one more time. So, hold on for a second, Ms. Krushak. I, I, I've got you. So, Mr. Hall, um, we're going to try this one more time. There you go. Okay. He unmuted himself and then muted himself. Mr. Hall, let's try this one more time. Do you, do, okay. Okay, okay, got you, Mr. Hall. All right. You want to okay. know what's going on in the area? Mr. Lanzano? Yes, yes. The, the building is uh, a few blocks behind Evander Child. Right. It's somewhat desolate over there, but it's decent. It's very quiet. All right. I know what you're talking about. You said Chestnut Street. All right. It's desolate, but it's quiet, but it's decent. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Okay. Okay. The, the, the issue also is they're um, they're moving around from from that building to where they would have to go. So do you think it, uh, it creates any significant or extraordinary danger for them being a uh, being uh, disabled or? or uh, a developmentally, no, no, I don't, I don't think it would be that destructive. No, no, it's 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 okay. okay. That, okay. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, it, it would be okay, definitely. Thank you, Doctor. Mr. Figueroa. Yeah. Well, hang on for a second, Mr. Lanzana. Mr. Ms. Cruzank, I uh, want to add a couple of more uh, points to that. So, um, let me let me have her speak. Sure. Hi, uh, good evening again. I just wanted to add that uh, we did, after hearing um, Mr. Carl's concerns, we did also were able to add a vehicle to um, the program so that they would have access to um, a car to take them to the um, Metro North. But I also wanted to add that um, as a part of the, the service and the supports that we provide, we teach the individuals how to travel, to care for themselves, and it's the responsibility of staff to make sure that the individuals are always safe. So they would be monitoring them, they would go with them initially to make sure that they know their route, that there is enough, that the environment is appropriate. And if there were any concerns at all, we would not put them in a position where they could be harmed um, in any way. This is a high functioning group as well. So they mix and mingle into general population pretty easily. Um, but we did hear Mr. Carl's concern, so we did add a vehicle, but staff are always around to support them. Um, if they would initially be traveling with them all the time, so they would be able to see what's happening and make sure that that people remain safe because obviously that is our ultimate goal as well is to make sure that the individuals are safe as they're acclimating themselves to you know a new environment so i just wanted to add that thank you so now you want me to uh, get mr figueroa mr lanzano so i've uh sent a note to alfredo so hopefully he can unmute himself there you go What's going on, family? Hope everybody's good. Hi, Ms. Ortiz. God bless you. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we hear you. All right, so this particular property, I mean, um, my concern is that as I'm looking at the CFO, it reads a, a legal two-family use group two dwelling. Um, if, I'm, if, I'm re if I'm hearing this correctly, they want to turn the second floor to, I'm going to assume, a community facility, which is a use group four. Is that correct? I miss, yes, it's right. it's going technically, to be a, a technical name for it, but it'll okay. be a home for four people. No, no. I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, I understand that because we have the same situation on two thirty third, and the people bought the property and they converted it actually to a use group four. So what I'm saying is that, like, let's just say, for instance, you you guys take over this property for let's just figure speech for like four years, five years, and you guys decide, yeah, I don't want to use that for that no more. And you know the owner of the property sees that you know they could use it for this type of 
use, you know, they could easily come back and, you know, put, you know, a shelter there or, you know, something in that nature. What I'm going, what I'm trying to say is that the existing CRO reads a use group two, which is resident use only, not community facility. So are you guys applying for at least a letter of no objection from the Department of Building stating that they have no objection for that property to be used for what you want? Well, when when we um, we don't have to file with the Department of Buildings because we're not changing the state of the home. The home is going to continue to be a two family house dwelling and we're just renting one of the apartments in the two family house rent um, building. We're not taking over the entire building. No, no, I understand that. Um, I guess you, I'm probably not saying it correctly. So what I'm trying to get at is that the CEO, George, give me a second. So the CEO- We're not changing the CFO. I, I understand what you're asking me, but I guess what I'm trying to explain is that we're not changing the use of the, of how the house is currently stated in the CFO. It's a two family house and that it's gonna stay that way because we're just renting an apartment. We're not, you know, we don't, we're not owning the building, we're not purchasing the property, we're just renting an apartment there. So that won't change the the status of the building for the, the building department. So we don't have to apply for anything to the department. Okay. Thank you. I, I, just, I just want to weigh in on Alfredo's point. Um, it's an interesting point because I hadn't even considered it, Alfredo. You're not providing services at this location, so therefore you don't need to change the certificate of occupancy is what you're saying. No, there's, there will be a staff there on every shift, so we will provide supports and services to them, but we don't have to apply for a, a change in the CFO because we don't own the building and it's not a large community residence. We're talking about four people, so we don't have to apply for the building department for that. So even I, we run across places that are leased that are not owned that still have to get an alteration or a new certificate of occupancy. You're saying because you're a small group home, that is not required. You're not required to change the use group from a use group two, which is private residential living to a use group four, which is community facility with sleeping accommodations. No. And the okay. staff don't, the staff also are not sleeping there yeah, as well. Yeah, understood. So I just understood. wanted to make that clear that the staff yeah. are sleeping there. No, and, and Alfredo, just to, I live in Co-op City. We have some group homes in the apartments that are here in Co-op City. I doubt that Co-op City has changed their certificate of occupancy for the people who live here. Um, in my building, I have like three apartments that are, um, that are used as uh, group homes. Okay, I see where Ms. Lisa Hayes has her hand up. So, Lisa, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. So, good evening, Ms. Krishna. I have a question. What's your long-term goal in our community? Um, much like has already been said, there's a lot of these kind of homes, and I appreciate your services, but um, it's been my experience that often I'm running into individuals who are mentally disabled and we were promised that they were going to have staff all the time and i see them in the streets and they are not having um any help and so i just want to know after if you were able to get this um recommendation from us what is your long-term goal in our community okay ms krusak you unmute okay you should be able to unmute there you go Okay. Um, as with any home that we operate is for people to live out their lives there. We try our best not to move people. Um, so this is really um, not something that usually happens with us, but our intention is that they would live out their lives there um, as any other family would moving into an, an apartment. Okay, so board members. Oh, I see Ms. Benitez has her hand up. So, Ms. Benitez, up. I see Ms. Benitez. Up, oh, you just disappeared. Up. Here you go. So, Ms. Benitez. There you go. And Ms. Kushang, what is the population? Is it male or female? I 
Hang on for a second. She, she, yeah, she's got music again. Okay, there you go. Sorry, I keep muting myself because my yeah, grandson is playing in the open. background. Yeah, I'm sorry. Open. So I was okay. trying not to have noise. Um, it's 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 a mix. They're both, and it's they've been mix. together for a very long time. It's a mixed group. Yes. So that means how many bedrooms will you be having in that apartment? There's four bedrooms, one bedroom for each person, and there's two bathrooms. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Benitez. So I see Ms. Hayes has her hand up again. So uh, Ms. Hayes. Thank you. So I just would also like to know why you chose this area, and then is this an area in which you will likely continue um, to rent apartments in? Um, there's no, um, there are no plans to look for additional apartments in that area. Uh, the reason why we chose that area is because the individuals currently live together in Manhattan and they're moving out of the apartment and their families in terms of the opportunity for their families to be able to visit them. That location was um, something that was a happy medium for the families that were involved. It's also a very nice home um, and they they lived together for a long time. So we wanted to put them somewhere where they could continue to be as independent as possible, still stay together and be able to see their families. So those were some of the factors and it was also affordable. Okay, so seeing no more hands, so I am going to, um, I'm going to now um, unlock everybody's mic, and I'm now going to call for a vote to accept the health committee's report. So we're not voting on the, um, we're not voting on the resolution just yet. We're just asking to accept the report. So. We're going to do that uh, by a simple majority. So, Madam Secretary, um, do we have a quorum? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have a quorum. So, yes. let me just ask this by a show of hands before we call for the individual vote. Uh, well, actually, no, we can do we can do it one of two ways. We're going to vote on the report, and then I'm going to ask you whether or not you're going to change. Well, never mind. I think that may be because I'm, I'm hearing some antipathy. So what I now want to do is the following. I'm going to ask you if you would, um, if you want to accept the report, let me just see um, your hands. Is that, is that, I think that's an easy way to do it, to accept the report, not to vote on the issue. So let me see your hands to accept the report. So raise it so Ms. Benitez can see it, please. Now, how do you want me to do this? Because um, then I would be have to be sitting here looking at each. Okay, so you want you, you want to call a roll to find out. Okay, so you, I got to call a okay, roll. Okay, then have at it, Madam Secretary. Dr. Bark, she has to call a roll to make it official. I uh, understand, I understand, yeah. Mr. Stricker. Thank you. So, all right, so Madam Secretary, call the roll. Okay, so let me just say this, right? And, and I, I can speak for Ms. Benitez when I say this. When she calls your name, unmute yourself so we can get this done quickly. It should not take 10 minutes for her to call the entire roll, right? So you know that your name is coming up, unmute yourself when the time comes, not before, and then that way we can get it done. Okay, Madam Secretary? Abdul Hussein? Yes. Franklin Alico? Uh, um, Jerry Bennett? Yes. Sydney Blair? Sydney Blair? Yes. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Sydney Blair? Yes. Okay. Denise Bond? Yes. yes. Ivan Boras. Aye. Paula Basadi. Aye. Aline Brown. Aye. Jerome Brown. 
Jerome Brown, Victor Brown, Hi. Deacon Brown, Deacon Brown, say hi. hi. Thank you. Norbert Bryan. Norbert Bryan. I know he's here, but is he here still? He's here, Madam Secretary. He is. Yes, I'm gonna, is he saying I? Is anybody uh, saying? I, I can't hear him. Okay. Up, up. Uh, Kate Sadie Campbell. Sadie, raise your hand if you are saying aye. Thank you. Madam Secretary, I'm sorry. This is Jerome Brown. I I have a difficulty unmuting myself. I'm I also. Thank you. Um Gail Clark. Joan Claude. Present. Yay or nay? A yay. Thank you. Beatrice Coronel. Yes. Colleen Dickerson. Yay. Kevin Eichelberger. Aye. Thank you. Alfredo Figueroa. Abstain. 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 Thank you. Barbara Gibson. Abstain. Johnny Goff. Johnny Goff. Is she still there? She's there, but she's saying she's, she's muted. She's does, muted. Does anybody see her face? Yes, she's there. And she said yes. Um is she shaking her head? She said I. <laughs> Thank you. You see what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Chantel Green. Robert Hall. Hi, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Hi. Who's that? Chantel Green. Okay. Thank you. Robert Hall, I. I got you. Lisa Hayes. I, I, John Isaac, I, James, Theodore James, I, Tisha Martin, Tisha, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I, yes, um, I thought. Last is I for last on the phone or up there? Paul Lanzano. Hi. Lucille Martin. She raised her hand. She raised her hand. I got you. I got you. Shanika Moore. Shanika Moore, I saw the TV. Okay, Shanika. got you. Clinton Mike. Aye. Thank you. Madam Secretary, can you hold on for a second? If you have had your name called, and some of you have and have your mics open, please close your mic. It's so rude when we're trying to call a roll. If you've had your name called, I shouldn't have to say this. If you've had your name called, please close your mic so that Madam Secretary can call the roll for everybody. Thank you. Madam Secretary, continue, please. Okay, thank you. Carmen Ortiz, shake your head if you're saying aye. Carmen. Yes, aye. Thank you, dear. Frank Porter. Claudia Powell. Claudia Powell. Anthony Reed. Anthony Reed. I. 
Who's who is that? Claudia Powell. You're saying I? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Robin. Is Dr. Dina Robbins there? Harry Singh? Aye. Thank you. Carl Stricker? Aye. Thank you. Nicole Ware? Aye. Nicole Ware? Aye. Thank you. Dr. Michael Berg? Aye. The eyes have it for the report, accepting the report. We need to go on next on to the next half. Oh, okay. So now so let me let me ask this question. So now does anybody want to change their vote? You need a motion first, Michael. You're right, and I'm rushing. I'm rushing, uh, Mr. Stricker. You're absolutely right. So, here's what we've got. We've got now. So we've accepted the report. So now we need a motion to accept the recommendation of the health committee, right? And I so make Ms. that Lance, motion. Okay. So the motion has been made. Second. Is there a second? Second, John Isaac. Okay, so the motion has been made by Mr. Stricker and properly seconded. Is there any more in readiness? And what have we got? All right, call for the vote. All the questions. All right, call for the vote. Madam Secretary? Okay. Hussein Abdul? Aye. Franklin Alipo? Judas Benitez abstains. Egeria Bennett? Aye. Sydney Blair? Aye. Denise Bond? Aye. 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 Ivan Boras? Or you broke up. Aye. Paula Basati? Aye. Marlene Brown. Marlene Brown. Aye. Thank you. Jerome Brown. Aye also. Thank you. Victor Brown. Aye. Deacon, Deacon Brown. Aye. Norbert Bryan. Norbert Bryan. Does anyone see Norbert Bryan? He's on, but I have no idea what's going on. Do you actually see him? I see him arm, but he's there's no I don't see him at all. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pass on him. Um Sadie Campbell. Sadie. Sadie, yes, no. Okay, gotcha. Gail Clark. Joan Claude. Aye. Beatrice Coronel. I apologize, but I'm unclear on what we're voting for now. In, in reference, what is the exact voting for um, them to come into our community? I would like to read the report, so I'm going to abstain before I, I would need more information, so I'm abstaining. No problem. Colleen Dickerson? Aye. Kevin Eichelberger? Aye. Alfredo? Same. I got you. Uh, Barbara Gibson? Abstain. Johnny Goff? Johnny Goff. Okay, got you. 
Chantel Green. I stay. Thank you. Robert Paul. Aye. Lisa Hayes. Aye. John Isaac. Aye. Theodore James. Aye. Tisha Martin. Aye. Ifa Lass. Paul Anzano. Aye, but to be but to be clear, and um, the vote is to uh, support them moving into the to the property. Just in case, uh, no one person wasn't clear. Uh, that's what we're voting on now. To accept to to say whether or not we support them moving into that property at eight fourteen. Chestnut. I vote aye. Okay, thank you. Does that help you, Beatrice? Okay, do you want to change your vote? No, I would need more information. I apologize. So nope. I'm standing. Uh, okay, no problem. Um, Lucille Martin. Chaniko Moore. Aye. Clinton Mike. Aye. Carmen Ortiz. Carmen. Carmen Ortiz. Yes or no? Okay, got you. Frank Porter. Yes. I got you. Thank you. Uh, Claudia Powell. Yes. Anthony Reed. Anthony Reed. Just to let you know, Anthony is it's texting me saying that he can't go and that the host has to let him on. Oh wow. Okay. Um okay, thank you for that info. Dr. Dina Robbins. Harry Singh. Aye. Paul Stricker. Aye. Nicole Ware. Aye. Dr. Michael Berg. Aye. Uh, has anybody heard from Norbert Bryan? Is he having any problems or? Okay, the eyes have it. Motion passes. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary, and thank you, board. So, Ms. Krushank, the motion passes. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, you can unmute yourself. I, I, I like the mics. So, I want to say I apologize that, you know, in essence, we had a health committee meeting. And you also kept you waiting. And so, you know, you've done your due diligence. And so, you know, we did two hours. So, on behalf of the committee board, let me offer my apologies to you. But nonetheless, you know, we were able to. Get the business of the community done. So again, thank you very, very much for bringing this to our attention, Mr. Lanzano. Thank you for your work in shepherding um, this through. And again, uh, we just spent uh, an extra 30 minutes at a meeting when this this could have been done at the committee level. But again, this wasn't your fault, Mr. Lanzano. So again, thank you very, very much. Um, can Mr. I? Shank, is there anything that we can do? Uh, just let us know. But you have some final words. Um, I just wanted to thank the community board. We look forward to becoming a productive part of the community board and um, we look forward to a long lasting and great relationship. So thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. And again, you know how to get in contact with me. You know how to get in contact with our district manager. You know how to get in contact with Ms. Lanzano. So anything Absolutely. You and you have my information as well. Out. Okay, great. Thank you. All thank right. You thank very you. Much. Good night, everyone. Not a problem. You as well. Okay. So we're now nice part of the agenda. Part of the agenda. Where we're yes, Clinton. I wasn't talking. Nothing. Oh, okay. Okay. I was saying okay. All right. Not a problem. So um, we're now at the part of the agenda where we're going to talk about old business. And so um, hopefully I'm going to be very, very quick. So um, I'm going to just share my screen and I'm going to be talking. 
while sharing. So under old business, we're going to talk about city planning and housing preservation and development joint stakeholders meeting. So that meeting was actually scheduled to take place this month. Um, you know, you've heard me say this before. Our district manager has been working very, very hard to make that happen. But um, what wound up happening was was that both agencies uh, canceled on us this month. And so tentatively, it's supposed to be scheduled for next month. Now, we don't have a date as of yet, or well, at least, okay, so George would like to chime in. So George, uh, chime in for us, please. Hey, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so they're proposing 424 or okay. 51. So 424, where, what are we, three, 424 would be the Saturday of April, and then 51 would be May, the next Saturday after that. Right. So, yeah, 424 is the last Saturday in April, and 51 would be the first Saturday in May. So, Correct. you know, what, what my suggestion is, is that um, for, for this, you know, again, we're going to probably have some of these meetings during the month, and what we can do is we can put out a survey during the month. And, and board members, let me just say this. All right. When we put out the information, all right, we need you to respond because here's what happens when you don't respond, then you let an executive decision take place. And then some of you will come back and say, oh, well, you know, I didn't know. Or, oh, that date doesn't work for me. Right. And by then it's too late. So if I put a notice out, then, of course, please respond. Case in point, I put a note out for the resolution on Mitchell Lama housing. Right. So of the 42 board members that we have, I only heard from five of them five out of 42, right? So again, if I only hear from those five, guess what? I'm voting in the direction of those five. So when we put this out, so you know the dates, 424 and 5-1, those are the dates. So when we put this out, please respond, okay? So thank you, George, as far as uh, we were up with that. The second item um, that's on under old businesses, mandatory inclusionary housing definition, and its effect on community board 12. So for those of you that were at the last land use committee meeting um, that Mr. Stricker and attorney Singh um, chaired for us, uh, Mr. Ted Weinstein actually came on and actually explained the topic of mandatory inclusionary housing. So I'm just gonna give a brief definition for those that don't know what it is. What that is, that's part of Mayor de Blasio's program to increase um, the uh, uh, degree of affordable housing and of course, also to empty the homeless shelters. And so what this uh, in essence does is that it takes housing, or excuse me, it takes manufacturing areas that were once manufacturing and then they ask you to zone it to residential. So in fact, the shelter that the women's shelter that's now being constructed on uh, East 233rd Street is in this type of MIH district because that's a manufacturing district. But since that particular area is, um, in that manufacturing district, Mr. Mayor de Blasio said, okay, well, fine, you know, we're going to make that housing, of course, and that's what this shelter uh, did. And again, I spoke about that last January, if you recall. So we have a, uh, we have a developer that's going to be coming before us soon. And the address is, of course, is 4541 Furman Avenue. And again, that's going to be the same type of um, deal that's coming up. So they're going to want to put housing they're right across the street from the railroad tracks. And so one of the things that was discussed at the last land use committee meeting was that there are many other things that we need. So for instance, we need job training. And so, you know, we had the idea of a job training site for those people that may want to learn carpentry skills or automotive skills or something else. I mean, I know we talked about hydroponics at the, um, at the pear tree site, but that's something that can be used as well. But I think most of what I heard was job training, we, we tossed that idea out. And so I know our second vice chair is on this and I asked Ms. Keisha Lago Martin to assist him on this and as well as Ms. Benitez, but I want you know to, and we're gonna talk about this at the next housing slash land use committee meeting. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be beating this down the board's um, door because we need to be proactive. We cannot be reactive and let these people come in and tell us that they want all sorts of housing when, of course, all we know, this is just a nice way for um, city to empty the homeless shelters and then dump them in our neighborhoods. And again, all of us on this board talk about the quality of life that, you know, we quite frankly 
um, don't like right now. And, and again, that's got to change. The only people that can change it is us. So let's stop being reactive and let's be proactive. I've been, I've been preaching this. And so I'm asking you to come up with ideas. And again, I've asked uh, second vice chair and I've asked Ms. Martin. So I'm going to you know, call on them you know, at the next meeting to have some ideas for us. And we're going to talk about this in committee. So that's just something that I want to throw out there to you board members. All right. So we, we have to be proactive. We can no longer be reactive if you want to control the type of community that we live in. And so I just want to bring that to your attention. OK. As it pertains to uh, new business, um, there are a couple of items that I want to bring to your attention right quick before we get to the last item um, on the uh, agenda. So there's going to be a joint meeting of the Economic Development and Transportation Committee on April the 8th. And this is in, as it pertains to or as it relates to the White Plains Road Safety Improvement Plan. Now, I've had the opportunity to take a look at this as well as um, Mr. Isaac, as well as um, George and Ursula. So we've taken a look at the plan, of course, and we've asked several questions. And so the reason that they're coming to us on April 8th is because a lot of the questions that were asked, and I want to say the last, I, I don't remember if I mentioned this in a transportation, uh, actually in a land use meeting, I think is where I mentioned this. Uh, actually, excuse me, it was executive committee meeting. It was the last executive committee meeting where several questions were asked um, as it pertains to what's going to happen. And my thing was like, let's see the presentation before we make any um, conclusions as to how this is going to affect the uh, White Plains Road corridor. So I personally think that you're going to like it. But again, I do not speak uh, for the board. OK, I can only speak for myself in this instance. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to attend this joint meeting of the transportation slash economic uh, development committee meeting on April 8th. And that way you can see the presentation, which will be made by the Department of Transportation. And then you can come with, with your own conclusions. That's where all of your questions can be answered. And the, again, they're postponing it until April so that the questions that were posed by myself, George, uh, John Isaac, and Ursula can be answered, which may be some of your questions, OK? The next item uh, on the agenda, of course, is the um, Boards of Standards and Appeal virtual meeting. So this information has been sent out by um, George and Ursula as it pertains to 2829 uh, Edson Avenue. So the date of that virtual meeting is scheduled for either April the 12th or April the 13th. So that information um, has not been solidified as of yet. Um, the block in question is block 4800, lot 18. Now, uh, for the record, as I said before, George and Ursula have sent out the information. Um, they've sent an electronic copy, of course, of what I have here, um, which is the plans of uh, the information. So what I would like um, George to do is comment on this because he's been a champion um, on this effort for. So George, if you can just give them a brief rundown but i need anybody who has anything to say about this project um i need you to come to this uh, bsa meeting because again we have no uh, voice is loud when we have a lot of us present so george if you can just comment on this right quick and then um i'll move on to the uh next item on the agenda yeah um i think uh, dr burke uh hit the nail right on the head um it would be really nice if we can have a lot of board members um, and even the public at large attend this meeting. Um, we will know one week before what date they actually choose, whether it's the 12th or the 13th. Um, but, you know, we've gotten very far. Uh, this property owner is now going to build the sidewalk and they're working with the next property owner. Um, and that is also another small victory. I spoke briefly about it in my um, report as well, my district manager's report for this month. So, um, you know, I once we get the concrete information on when the date is, um, I would like everybody to attend. And I would also like for all of you to sign up to testify. Now, you don't have to say anything, but I want to give the BSA Board of Directors of one of which actually lives in our district, um, 
you know, the, the idea that there are going to be plenty of people speaking on this issue so that they understand where we are coming from. This has been a long, this has been over 20 years coming uh, for this side, just a regular sidewalk to be built. Thank you, George. And, and look, man, let me just say this. I think because we have been so proactive because our district manager was really proactive in this and because we didn't give up any leverage, the fact that we're really getting this sidewalk built. And so, again, I took the liberty to you know, read the district manager's report. So if you haven't read it before uh, the meeting, I invite you to read it. But being proactive, we were able to get the accommodations that, you know, um, George has just talked about. So again, that's what that's what being proactive will do for us as a board. And so I'm imploring each and every one of you, if you can make it, as well as the community at large, and for those of you that are uh, listening to me on Bronxnet as well, if you can make this meeting again, um, you can go to www.nyc.gov uh, forward slash uh, BSA, which is for the board of stands in appeal, and then you can find out exactly when that date is, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, three more items on the new business. So executive officer election, so for 2021. So it's coming to the time of year where it's time for um, elections for the board, for chair and um, vice chair, first and second vice chair, in addition to um, all the other offices, including our brand new Office, of course, of corresponding secretary. So we need to form our nominating committee. And so what I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask my brother um, Clinton to lead that again. And here's why, Clinton. Here's why now you're giving me that look. But here's the reason why. First of all, because you know I love you, although you went to Norfolk State, but I still love you nonetheless, right? But more importantly, because you've done this before in this virtual environment. And I think the way that you carried out the election was absolutely uh, splendid. It went without reproach. And I think everybody's shaking their head. Yes, the way that you conducted the election was absolutely outstanding. And quite frankly, especially since you now have that experience, you and your team, I think would be ideal because at, at the earliest, we're not looking to get back into our building. At, and, it, and this is a, a prayer that we can get back in in September, okay? so. That's why I'm asking you to please, um, you know, chair this committee again with your team in place. And that way it will be a smooth transition. So um, I thank you for your service in advance because I know that you're willing to help us out. And I know more importantly that you care about this board. And so uh, you, you would like to see a smooth transition. So thank you um, in advance to you and your team, Clinton. Um, so, Excuse me. Excuse me. I would like to be part of that. How are you saying you have a team? It's open oh, to Okay, Ms. Gibson, board, Ms. So. Gibson, we, we will, we'll, 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 um, if you, well, look, we have the committee that's already in place. No, and sir. And so, Ms. Gibson, no, we, we, we need to move. Ms. Gibson, we it's have the committee in place. Board. Ms. Gibson, we have the committee in place. And we're not no, sir. tonight. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have to lock her there. Okay. So, you know, with that being said, I I'm going to move on to the next item on the agenda. And the next item on the agenda is uh, the discipline committee. So, you know, you've been hearing us talk about the discipline committee for quite some time. And so, and I know Dr. Hall, God bless him. I know that, um, you know, we want to form the discipline committee and, you know, I've, I've been talking about it as well. But unfortunately, we we never really did. And, and this was something that the borough president asked each community board to do uh, quite some time ago. And quite frankly, we just never got around to it. And, you know, there have been some incidents that have been happening recently, which now request, which now require us to really to do this. And so if you want to know where you can find this information regarding this committee, um, you can actually find it in your community board handbook. Okay, so you can find this in Community Board Handbook, and I want to say I thought I had the page number written down. Yes, I do. It's page 15. So you can find this in page 15 of the Community Board Handbook, where you know the directive was clearly uh, given to each community board uh, to form this community. So all 12 community boards in the Bronx are supposed to form this committee. Now, 
you know, look, I, I think you know where the district manager stands as far as forming uh, committees, and you know where I stand as far as forming <laughs> committees. And quite frankly, we do not want to, you know, we don't want to form another committee if we don't have to. But I think in this particular case, um, you know, it is it, necessary. And so I know I know George is smiling, but you know we 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 discussed this. Um, it, it is necessary. Additionally, um, several board members have approached me um, with this as well. And so you know we know how to form a committee because of course that's given to us by uh, or how to change the bylaws. So here's here's what needs to happen. So in order to form this discipline committee, so if you look on page sixteen. It tells us the borough president gives us a directive that the first thing that we need to do is we need to amend the bylaws. And so it's in the second paragraph of the handbook. So for those of you on page 16, for those of you that are looking at it, it's on the second paragraph right here. So we, the first thing we need to do is amend the bylaws. So in order to amend the bylaws, it takes one person to um, be able to put something in writing and uh, send it to the chairman that it is actually brought up at the next board meeting and so forth and the chairman will do so. So I had actually about three or four board members actually bring this to my attention. And so they put this in writing. And so I'm acknowledging that, that I have received it. And so I am bringing it to the floor. So what is gonna happen now is that since I brought it to the floor, According to the bylaws, Article 9, Section 1, uh, for those of you that are unaware, that's where you can find this, Article 9, Section 1. What we now will do is that this will go before the bylaws committee, right? So I know that the bylaws committee has not met in quite some time, which is good, but this will go before the bylaws committee so that they can discuss this and eventually adopt this. And then at the very next general board meeting that we will have, which will be next month, then we will take a vote on the recommendation of the bylaws committee to form this uh, discipline committee. So for those of you that may want to know what the discipline committee does, and so again, that is on page 15 as well, but um, it gives the purpose of the discipline committee and how it is um, to be uh, constructed. And so again, I'm not going to read this out aloud because again, everybody should have a copy of this. And so you will be, if you don't, then of course, please see George or Ursula, or more importantly, you could read it on uh, the website. Uh, it is on the Bronx Borough President's website where you can actually read um, the discipline committee and what it, what it does and, um, and how to, how to, um, how it should be um, formed and what its purpose is. So again, I'm not going to read all of that out, but I would just say in light of recent events, then this is something that uh, needs to be formed. And so I would thank those board members that uh, brought this to my attention. And so we will look at forming uh, one more standing committee. Um, the discipline committee obviously will only meet in times when it is necessary. So although it will be a standing committee, it is not. it will not go on the monthly calendar, all right? So, um, but it will be a standing committee. So we will finally follow through on the director from the borough president. Okay. May I speak? Who's on the committee, sir? Ms. Gibson. Last but not least. Who's on that committee, sir? Excuse me? I can't hear you. I'm asking you who's on the committee. So. You cannot have a committee that has not been formed yet, Ms. Gibson. I'm understanding. That's why I'm asking you. When are you going to select? Ms. Gibson, I just explained to you that and to the entire board and to the community that the way that it is selected is goes by the bylaws committee first. Thank so you. if you're interested, then you can attend the next bylaws committee meeting whenever Mr. Stricker and Ms. Borsati call that meeting. You're more than welcome to attend. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Um, next, and unfortunately, um, last on the agenda is um, 
is, is an item that, again, we revisited. We started in January and we have to revisit again. And so we have some names before us. And I'm glad, I'm glad to say that some of those people on the list are actually here tonight, which is fantastic. Um, it, it's unfortunate that, you know, they had to take putting names on an agenda to get them here, but nonetheless, I'm glad they're here, nonetheless. And so again, this is not, as, as we did in January and we did in February, this is not a final vote, all right? Due process is due to each member on um, this list. But as we all know, um, our bylaws clearly tell us that we have to show up at board meetings and or committee meetings. Right, it's very evident, and the borough president has been cracking down on that. And I promised you that if I became chairman, that I would uh, do as much to make certain that we hold everybody accountable. So, to that end, um, we have a list of people that are here that have either missed three consecutive meetings, that have missed either more than half of the general board meetings, or don't serve on any committees at all and have not served on any committees at all, all of which are um, leaves these individuals available for expulsion from the board. So how this works is the following. So I sent each of those individuals a letter, right? So they have their electronic copy now. The uh, certified copy will probably be going out uh, tomorrow, but each member has their electronic copy. Copy was also sent to uh, our district manager, as well as our community associate, as well as Mr. Tom McCannia uh, from the borough president's office. So what happens is the following. Tonight, you will decide whether or not, uh, well, first of all, we formed the commission back in January. So technically that commission um, dissipated when we had the last vote. So tonight we will have to form a new commission if you want to move forward. The way that it then works is that the individuals addressed will have until April the 14th to respond in writing to me. From there, it then goes before the commission and they will make their case before the commission, which is no more than three, excuse me, no less than three and no more than five members. Once that commission then hears from the individuals on the list, the commission will then decide whether or not to recommend to the full board expulsion. If the commission then decides that the member has a valid reason and that they should stay, they will then recommend that to the full board. However, if the commission recommends that they do not really, um, not say that they really do not approve of what the member on this list has been stated or what has been, um, I won't say accused, but in other words, what has been illustrated in the letter, then of course the commission then recommends to the full board that the member be expelled. So tonight is not an expulsion vote, all right? Tonight is a vote to determine whether or not you want to form a commission to form um, to look into, or it's more like an impeachment inquiry, in essence, what it is. It's akin to an impeachment inquiry. Now, although those members are here tonight, some of which are on um, our board meeting, again, tonight is not an expulsion vote. So their time to defend themselves will be, again, next month, okay, during the commission hearing. The first thing that they have to do is respond. So if you remember, in January, we had three members who, quite frankly, did not even respond to the letter by the date and time. And therefore, it was just automatic that they were, you know, we brought it to the floor and you expel those three members. And so the fact that two of these members are at least here says something. So I will at least give them credit for that. However, they are still accountable to you, uh, the board. So what I'm going to call for now is I'm going to call for a vote um of the board to determine whether or not you want to form the commission to expel these board members that are listed shall i make a motion certainly mr stricker i make a motion that we form a a committee to review 
the tenants of a uh, of persons that you sent letters to. Second. Second, John Isaac. Okay, so the motion has been moved and properly seconded. Um, is there any unreadiness before we call for the vote? Move the question. Um, I move the question. Here. I have a question. Okay. Yes, Mr. Oh, Lanzano. I'm sorry. Is that Ms. Lanzano? Yes. yes. Um, in the past, we had similar situations like this, and there were members who didn't come around for years, as a matter of fact. They were asked. We tried to have them removed, not for anything personal, but so they could be replaced with somebody who wanted to be a little more active. But in any case, uh, it seemed that the uh, the councilman decided that he or she wanted that person to remain on the board and we couldn't expel them. So uh, my question is, do we have the power to expel somebody? The answer is yes, because it's written in the bylaws, right? So the councilman, um, whether it be the, our councilman in District 12 or whoever's out of District 11, are all they are non-voting members. So even though they have their power to appoint, they have to abide by the same bylaws that we do. Okay. So, um, you know, that that's where we are with uh, that, Ms. Lanza. But thank you for your question. I move the question. Okay. Any other? Oh, yes, Mr. Boyd. So, thank you. Um, my question is, is it just sounds counterproductive to the discipline committee. Um, you know, being that you would, you know, I, I think, you know, you would think that the discipline committee would handle such cases instead of having another committee, as you said, that, you know, is more counterproductive than having multiple committees. Okay, well, thank you for your concern, Mr. Boris, but um, again, this, we're following the bylaws, right? So we're not doing anything that is uh, contrary to the bylaws. The way that we do this is by the book. And of course, as many of you know, I'm a scientist. And the way that you get experiments done, of course, is following, um, following the rules. And so that's what we're gonna do here. Okay. Any other unreadiness? Okay, Madam Secretary. Hussein Abdul. Aye. Franklin Alipo. Jeff Benitez, aye. Egeria Bennett. Aye. Sydney Blair. Denise Bond. Aye. Ivan Boas. Nay. Paula Basadi. Paula Basadi. Paula. I see her. And she's probably muted. No, no she's not muted. Um, okay, I'll, I'll go on. Marlene Brown. Marlene Brown. No. Jerome Brown. Hi. Victor Brown. Victor Brown. Victor Brown. Okay. Deacon Brown. Deacon Brown. Matt. Norbert Bryan. Norbert Bryan. Norbert Bryan. Hi. Hi. Sadie Campbell. 
Gail Clark. Not present. Joan Claude. Aye. Beatrice Coronel. Aye. Tolene Dickerson. Tony. Gotcha. Kevin Eichelberger. Aye. Alfredo Figueroa. Nay. Barbara Gibson. Barbara Gibson. Barbara Gibson. Is anybody? Nay. Johnny Goff. Johnny Goff. Johnny Goff. Chantel Green. Nay. Robert Hall. Nay. Robert Hall. Nay. I, I, I'm sorry. Robert Hall, can you say it again? Nay. Thank you. Lisa Hayes. Lisa Hayes. Aye. John Isaac. Aye. Theodore James. Aye. Keisha Martin. Aye. Aye for last. Upstate. I for last. Abstain. Call in Zana. Madam Secretary. Aye. Uh, this is Victor. Who, who's I hear? Yeah, I'm Madam Secretary. This is Victor Brown. Uh, um, my internet has been unstable. So I'm hoping. What's your vote, Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown? Lucille Martin. Okay. Lucille Martin. I said nay. Thank you. Shaniqua Moore. Aye. Clinton Mike. Aye. Thank you. Carmen Ortiz. Aye. Thank you. Frank Porter. Claudia Powell. Claudia Powell. Claudia Powell. Nay. Anthony Reed. Did anyone hear what he said? Aye, aye. Thank you. Dr. Dina Robbins. Aye. Harry Singh. Aye. Carl Stricker. Aye. Nicole Weir. Abstain. Victor Brown. Aye. Thank you. Dr. Michael Burke. Aye. Carla Barsati. Carla Barsati. Can anyone get her attention? I see her. Yeah, we see her. <laughs> That's it. Okay, I'm going to have to draw. The eyes have it. Motion passes. So what will now happen are the names that are on this list will now have to respond to uh, the chair and the commission by no later than April 14th to tell us why um, A, 
that they had to go on the list, more importantly, why they have been absent. If the commission deems that their rationale is worthy, then of course they will recommend that those members stay. If they do not, then those members will be uh, have their membership revoked and thus expelled from the board. So again, thank you, board members. And this is not something that I take lightly, but as I said in my promise to you, I said that I was going to uh, help everybody accountable in order for it to be an effective board. We have to get rid of board members who, quite frankly, are not doing their fair share. And that's more work for people like Ms. Clyde, that's more work for Julia, that's more work for Clinton, myself, and so many others that are really putting in, being on four and five committees when others aren't even serving on one. So, again, thank you. So, before we end, I just want to um, ask for a couple of items. Uh, this is under good and welfare. Um, a couple of board members have really um, endured some um, some pain recently, so I would like to ask you to continue to uplift Ms. Ortiz. And, and, and let me just comment on this, if I may, as I look at Ms. Ortiz's smile. I mean, the worst thing... Are you saying I? I've had to do... Are you saying I? ...to tend her daughter's way. But yet and still, Ms. Ortiz was able, she was able to come to last month's board meeting and she was able to come to this month's board meeting and she's grieving. You know what I mean? Now, there is no greater loss than the loss of a child. But yet she's here. And for those of you that voted nay, again, I can't tell you how to vote board members, but that's, that says something. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, thank you, Ms. Ortiz. I ask that we continue to pray for Ms. Ortiz. I ask you to pray for Mrs. Clyde as well. And again, and I'm not going to disclose what's going on, but if they want to, they can at some point to you individually. And I also ask you to pray for our community, Ursula Green, as she's undergone some difficulties as well. So again, please keep them in your prayers, board members, as well as uh, community at large. We have birthdays this month. So again, to our March birthday, Denise Spahn, Kevin Eichelberger, and Ivan Boris all have birthdays this month. I think uh, Mrs. Bond's birthday was on the 6th. Mr. Eichelberger's birthday was on the 20th. And Mr. Boris's birthday is actually tomorrow. So again, all of you that have birthdays in March or wedding anniversaries, again, happy birthday to each and every one of you. Um, wishing all of you the best. And although we won't be uh, singing this month, but nonetheless, I uh, just want to wish you each and every one of you a happy birthday, and I look forward to celebrating uh, April birthdays as well. So, before we close out, um, you know, this has been it's been a rough month for the board for a number of reasons. You know, whether it's COVID or you know whether it's something going on. And again, as I said before, I mentioned. Uh, you know, what's, what's happening with some of our uh, board members and our staff and other things that may be going on. You know, it, it's been a rough month. And so what I want to do is before asking for an adjournment is that I want to lead everybody. Uh, I want to recite a poem. And it's a very uplifting poem. Um, it's by Rudyard Kipling. And the name of this poem is called If. And, and what I'm hoping is that find unity in this because I think whether, you know, we have a lot of work that we need to do um, for this community. And I'm hoping that everybody within the sound of my voice can hear this and, and be uplift, uplifted and then we'll, we'll leave. But it's, it's, yeah. And it goes like this. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs, and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, make allowances for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good or talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think 
and not make thoughts your aim. If you can deal with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by natives, make a trap of fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, stoop and pick them up with worn out tools. If you can make a heap of all of your winnings and risk it on one turn, a pitch and toss, and lose, start again at your beginnings and never be worried about your loss. If you can force your heart, your nerve, and your sinew to serve their turn long after they're gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will to says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose a common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count on you, none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. So I just want to leave you with that because again, as I said, that's such an inspirational poem. And I just want, oh, I see Miss Moore. I'll say Miss Shaniqua Moore says that her birthday was yesterday, so which would have been the 24th. So, Ms. Shaniqua Moore, there you go. I see you smiling. So, happy birthday to you as well. I will put that uh, in. So, again, thank you so, so much, board members. And so, um, I need a motion for a German. Motion. Oh, All right. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, John Isaac. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Let me see your hands. Aye. All right. All right. Motion passes. Anthony Reed, my brother, can you lead us out in prayer? Yes, I can. Father God, thank you for this day that the Lord has made. Oh God, we thank you just for this meeting. We thank you for the blessing and the knowledge, and we ask that you keep us as one, as we stay together in the community. As we strengthen each other in the community, oh God, we actually just cover us, protect us, give us an eye to see and an ear to hear, thus to save the Lord, and also walk with us, keep us, and strengthen us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood, amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Reed. Board members, again, thank you for such a meeting. It is 9.32, and yes, I know I took at least three minutes with the point, but it's okay. It's not 10 o'clock, and we're gone. So, Mr. Board members, thank you. Very, very second, much. I appreciate you. Love you, you every one of you. And I will see you next month. All right. Take care, right. everybody. Nice. Before you turn off, Mr. Chairman, just indulge me for one second. I want to invite everybody to join me tomorrow in the blessing that I want to share with you. Tomorrow, Mrs. Brown and I will take our second COVID vaccine. And we'll be celebrating our 61st. Wedding uh -huh. anniversary, I say. Wow. Okay. Wow. Amen. Congratulations. 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 So thank you so much, Mr. Brown. We thank appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, we love you. And um, as I said, we really, 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 and truly miss you. And we love you. Take care, everybody. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.